Asma. Hey, Namrita. Can you hear me? Yes, Can you guys sir. hear me? Yes, sir. Good. Thank you. Starting off in a minute. By now, all of you would have received your mock exam uh, review, the detailed review which we have sent. And of course, we all have had a discussion on that. Guys, it is important and imperative that we learn from you know, what is being observed as, as the pitfalls or as the areas to improve on. And we have to ensure that we are, we are, we are really not missing on to that. Is that clear, Nia? I'm just ensuring that everybody is hearing me. Is that clear, Nia? Yes, sir. All righty. How about you, Namrita? All good? Yes, sir. Good. All right. Good. Very good. Do you guys mind, you know, just switching on your cameras, please? I think that will be really helpful just to ensure that, you know, I can see you guys, you know, the way you're seeing me in terms of, you know, having that kind of an energy, guys. <clears throat> All right. So where we are, we are on the pre-scene material, guys. Assumption for the today's session is that you should have and would have read through the pre-scene material by now. You have gone through that once so that, you know, you're aware of in on the broader perspective as to what this really says. Can I assume that? Kapil, can I assume that? Kapil, are you there with me? Yeah, I'm there with you. So, yeah, can I assume that, that you've gone through once at least, if not more? Yes, Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So, guys, you should have received the pre-seen material. It looks like something like this. I'm sure, you know, many of you would have gone through this. I just did an exercise on it and I just wanted to tell you before we really jump on and have a deep dive onto this. What I've done is that I have read this pre-seen material as if I'm sitting in the exam and what all pointers should be really coming onto your mind. What I've done is I've started putting on, on a piece of paper. So what I did was as if I am entering in an exam room and this is what is being given to me as a case study to read. So what I've done is I've started reading it. And while I'm reading it, what I've started doing is I've started talking to myself on the areas on which I really needed to be having a front foot forward. Just to make sure that, you know, yes, I'm capturing those details. I'm having those things onto my mind. And what I've done on the sideline is I've started pen downing all of those things. And the deck that you'll be seeing in a while, something like this, has all the details that I ran through when I was reading this. What I'll do is that, you know, after this session, I will be sending you this presentation. You can have this with you because this has the complete details of, you know, what I have understood from this pre-seen material. And we'll also talk when we are going through in a while, we'll also talk in terms of, you know, things that you may really need to have it at the back of your mind when you will sit for your exam in the coming days to go. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right, jumping off, guys, you know, we are talking on on the, you know, on the SBL pre-seen material for the September 2023 exam, we have a case of core Zs. We understand that. We have known that by now and we have seen that by now. I would only say just for the sake of convenience or just for the sake of ease to have some picture at the back of your mind, assume this core Zs to be the Indigo Airlines of India. If you're in India, I'm sure you'll be able to correlate to that. If you're in US, you know, you can correlate that to be Ryanair or, you know, uh, you know, any low cost airline. Or if you are in, um, you know, in Europe, you can assume, you know, the low cost, you know, the low cost airline of, you know, of, of, of your geography. But just to set the context of many of the Indian students here, I would want you to assume this to be or think this to be the Indigo Airlines of the world, Indigo Airlines of the India, because many of the cases, many of the areas over here are really resembling what is really happening in the Indigo Airlines. So have that at the back of your mind. I'm sure you'll be able to circle this down and of course, take this forward. All right. Now, COSITS is a, is a low cost airline. And you, what I've done over here is I've tried giving you the bullets. Of course, you know, there is a huge content that is being given to you. But what I've done is I've tried giving you the bullets of, of, you know, of what you should be having as an understanding in your mind so that, you know, one, of course, you know it. 
and then of course you know we'll talk more on that in terms of you know what does that really mean for us from the examination standpoint now corset is a low cost regional airline business got that sir it is very well clear there is a no frill approach low cost airline does not give any benefit else than you being flying from one place to the other no food you know free of cost nothing uh, even the baggage are not free of cost you know some to an extent they might provide you you know the cabin baggage but any kind of baggage that you're really carrying uh, let's say you know above some kgs they would be charging you for that and so on and so forth so many of the things including the printing of the boarding pass is not free in many of the airlines you know uh, and, and you should have that at the back of your mind that this is no frail airline question that you have in exam this is a low cost airline got that sir now when i'm saying this the first thing first that should really come onto your mind is that this is a case of cost leadership this company would be able to survive or is surviving basis the cost leadership strategy because they are really fighting for the cost to ensure that their cost is minimum to ensure that they are able to attract attract passengers or people to fly on the on the holistic basis customer you know is loyal to the price not to the company and we all know it when we are traveling we all see you know what is the you know least cost airline that we have and we try to travel over there because we do not want to incur good amount of money on to the same it is going to be the same these companies these airlines have to really fight for their bread on the ongoing basis pushing themselves to always have a hunger for keeping their price as low as possible the strategy that will be somewhat somewhere applicable on this is cost leadership strategy is that clear yes sir now again the the many of the purple things that you will that you will see on the slide are the ones that i have written that you should be really thinking of in your mind i thought it i started writing on to it and that is the reason you know you would see that in purple over here the most of the content that is in black i've just taken up from the from the pre seen material i've just taken it and i've just tried putting it just onto it and all the purple content that you'd see over here are the ones that have really you know thought through in terms of you know what is that that the examiner really wanting us to think about or first what should you be carrying in the exam room with yourself all right established 20 years ago yes sir we get that in carland okay a country located in the continent of hundria so effectively we are talking about various continents this is a continental airline kind of a thing so it is a continental airline which is flying within you know hundria in one of the country called carland all right okay hundria is politically stable so it's a stable economy stable stable uh, continent per se and economically developed continent in the world so it's a somewhat somewhere developed continent i can correlate this to somewhat somewhere in in europe wherein you have a you know a continent that is really really a developed kind of a thing and of course they are really really stable from the political political perspective and of course i'm really doing good on the holistic basis it is currently the second largest low cost airline business operating in hundria so effectively i am the second largest second largest low cost airline in the entire continent get that sir in terms of percentage numbers key metrics to monitor over here when i was writing over this when i was thinking over this i should be thinking about that you know now that i am the second largest it effectively gives me the power to impact the market so i am somewhat somewhere i can be the market changer it gives me the prestige and the power it gives me the reputation i am somewhat a market leader and of course considering that i would enjoy some benefit benefit of scale since i am that large i would have some benefit of scale and also i would have benefit in terms of staff attraction in terms of hiring people in terms of getting the economies of the scale and so on and so forth those are the things that should be really really jumping off in your mind when you get to see something like this is that clear yes sir don't worry these notes will be available to you you don't have to write anything my friend this video also will be available to you you can see it any number of times there is no problem on that i just want asma amir to be with me for the coming 60 minutes of time just with me nothing else i just want to give you the best my friend to ensure that you get the best out of this guys i'm still not seeing you opening your cameras please switch on your cameras you know me by now i just want to have the face to face chats all right introduction each country in hundria uses its own currency carland's currency is 
of course, given now. Now you're thinking about it. That's, you know what? Considering there's a continent, considering I'm operating in a particular country, okay. And of course, my country has a particular currency, okay. I would be, would be exposed to various kind of translation or transaction risk within the continent. That should be the thought process that should come onto your mind. Again, guys, but the pointers that I've picked up, you can straight away pick it up from the from the pre seen material. But the topics that are being written out, the things that are being written out in the purple are the ones that you should be thinking of when you're reading these kind of things, because that would prepare you from the standpoint of dealing with the question that may come your way. Somewhat that should give you a thought, oh, oh, I need to be very much conscious about it. Oh, oh, yes, this can be a thing that can be tested in the exam. Oh, oh, if this will be tested, then I know that this is something that is there. I can write it over there. That should be the thought process. That should be the mantra that you should be having to ensure that you're not missing on to it. All right. Corset operate in a point-to-point -point service, meaning that it operates its flights directly between the destination. Remember, my friend, I'm just giving you color. Many of the organizations, many of the airline organizations are hub-based model. They fly to their own country for taking the, you know, taking the, uh, you know, um, the passengers from one place to the other. Firstly, they will go on to their own hub, their own country, and then they will take it, the, take the people to the respective countries. That is the hub model. For example, uh, you know, just to give you color, many of the flights in, let's say, uh, let's take an example of British Airways. Many of the flights, even if I'm, if I have to go from India to US, you know, uh, the flight will take me from here to London, and from then London to, uh, you know, you, you know, Boston or New York or wherever, where I really need to go. But the hub would be, you know, the the London in that case, the the the, the you know, it, they will certainly take me to London. Come what may, even if you have to go somewhere else, they will take you to London and then they'll take you somewhere. That is what British Airlines does. On the same lines, Qatar Airlines, that you know, they take everyone to Doha and then from Doha to the respective place. Emirate, you know, from here to let's say Dubai and from Dubai to you know to respective places. But point to point airline means that it will fly from here and it will land up over there. There is no connecting piece that is being attached to it. They are just point to point from Delhi to Ahmedabad, Delhi to Bangalore, Delhi to say, you know, let's say Mumbai and so on and so forth. It's a it's a country wide airline. It is not traveling outside the country, so you should not be thinking about on those lines. Thinking about this from the standpoint that yes, it is a point to point airline. Now that should somewhat somewhere raise an alarm into your mind that I have a business opportunity here. This airline can expand the operations, you know, I would say beyond the reach what they're targeting right now. So there is an opportunity here. You can have an expansion of the business done if you're exploding out on what they're doing right now. You know, from point to point, they can go to hub, they can go to different countries, they can go to different continents. That should be the thought process that you should start having and thinking in your mind. Is that clear, Asma? Yes, sir. All right, moving on. This means that if passenger do not have to travel to change the flight at hub airport to reach their destination, which helps Corset to reduce its operating cost. Another point to think about, if I'm not taking anything to hub and then going to somewhere else, effectively, I'm saving on the cost. Because anytime a flight land in an airport and then fly from an airport, I have to incur the airport expenses, the airport charges. You know, they, they call it by different names. Just think it from the layman standpoint. If somebody is allowing me to land up in their airport and then fly from their airport, they're charging the airport charges. If I'm just doing, you know, point to point, effectively, I'm saving the money over there. They have, that is one of the reasons they are the low cost airlines. We get that, sir. But that should raise an alarm in your mind that we have a business opportunity coming our way. Is that clear? Yes, sir. In-flight meals are not provided. It's a no real airline, sir. We know that, sir. We do not have any in-flight meals unless paid for separately and includes automation of wide range of processes, including booking, flight documentation, baggage drop, and further, you know, flight check-in. Remember, this question when I was reading, it specifically pointed out to me an area that Corset is very much looking forward to technology. They've done a lot in technology from the standpoint of automating their processes. However, if they're really thinking of the growth, they have to think about the, the, the automation and the new kind of technologies that are really coming in the era of, of airlines. I am just thinking about it, my friend. I, I don't know what the examiner will give us, but 
while i'm reading this i'm just thinking on in my mind in terms of you know yes this can go wrong this is something i should be thinking about this is something that may come our way this is something that i should be thinking about from the organizational standpoint this is something i should be controlling from the organizational standpoint this is something i should be thinking ahead from the from the organizational standpoint and so on and so forth those are the thoughts my friend that you should be having when you are hitting the exam in the best possible way and that is what i really want you to think through all right moving on now we have talked about in general now we'll talk about the air you know the the airline industry as to what the industry is and what are they really doing all right airline industry has a wide range of businesses we get that sir that's very generic sir we have commercial airlines of course that that really carries what the passengers and the cargo we have non commercial flights which are operated what or on the private basis and of course for the for the government or the regulation basis we have part of aviation industry which also includes the all other aviation related businesses such as jet engine suppliers you know suppliers the aircraft manufacturers and aerospace companies that is given in your pre-seen material this basically explains what the airline industry is all about i have just given you the gist over here after this my friend if you have read this once and you will go through this deck after this you do not need anything but to think about what can come from these these pointers and if that will come what should be your thought process in terms of addressing that in the best possible way is that clear yes sir now what are the passenger types passenger types are leisure passenger the ones who will just go and roam around we have the business passengers only for the purpose of really doing the business in that particular geography different class of passenger first class business class economy class we all know that sir we are a frequent flyer sir what are we talking we all understand that yes sir completely in agreement all right moving on to the airline industry in details airline types by the service we have international flights we have national flights and we have regional flights different different kinds of flights are there the country that we are really talking the, the 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 example that we really have of the corset are the ones who are the regional carriers point to point carriers no free airlines no free airlines yes so we get that so that's the basic we have understood by now all right from the business model standpoint we have a full service carrier we have low cost carrier we have chartered airlines we have cargo airlines full service carrier means you know what which the ones which are really giving you what you really need the qatar airlines the 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 emirates of the world the british airlines of the world all of that are the air indias of the world they are really giving you anything and everything that you really need and they are the full blown full service airlines however low cost carriers are like the spice jets of the world like the rihanna airs of the world or for that matter the the indigos of the world and so on and so forth all right moving on some of the you know statistics that was being, that was being given for the airline industry you know and it is it is very clear that you know you will see as in, as as part of one of the information being given onto your pre seen material what they have given is that there is a key stat for the year 02 available which says what which says that from the global and hundria standpoint the continent that we are really talking on in the question we have 3 billion of passenger per year on the on the overall global basis out of which 600 million is from hundria all right now we have average number of passenger okay commercial sorry average number of commercial flights per day is 73000 out of which 15000 in is in hundria all right the passenger revenues are 390 billion dollars in totality on, on on the global basis 79.2 comes from hundria i just tried doing some percentages to it i can reasonably say that hundria is approximately 20% of the global revenues global commercial flights and of course the people that have been transported 20% my friend 20% it's huge on the global basis i'm 20% that effectively means that any change that would come in the airline business is going to be impacting me severely or positively as the case may be 20% on the global basis having a continent in terms of numbers is not small is huge we should have that at the back of our mind that we are too big in size we are too big to sink my friend do not forget that all right moving on now while i was thinking about it i just tried you know pointing out few things that should stick on to your mind what currently we have around 20% share of the global market we just calculated that we are 
you know, we have a big market to explore. You know, we are still having, of course, we're too big, my friend, in the size, but we still have 80% to explore on. We have to think about Porter's Diamond if you're thinking about getting into different geography. Remember, if you're thinking about getting onto different geography, Atma says, sir, different geography means Porter Diamond, sir. Sir, we understand that, sir. Sir, we are Fintramer, sir. We are not going to be forgetting that. I'm loving you, my friend, for that. That should be the that should be the mantra, and that should something be you know be there in your mind when something like this really comes up. If he's thinking about, if he's giving you something to think about different geography, you have to have to think about Porter's diamond over there and apply it and move on. We'll talk on in a while. All right, then what kind of opportunity we have? Can become a multi-regional airlines. Who knows, right? I daily want to you know fly wherever I want instead of becoming an international airline, can choose to be multi-regional, can replicate the same business model in different continent and region, depending upon what God knows what choice he'll give you. He may want you to tell you that, you know, I just want to go multi-regional or multi-country or, you know, different, different uh, countries or a global airline. Who knows what he really gives on to you. But if he gives you something like that, you know, you should certainly be having something in your mind from the Porter's Diamond standpoint that you have to apply that in some way or the other. If I'm just going out of my out of my comfort zone. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Coming on to the flight <coughs> management activities. All right. Flight management activities are provided by the airport. Airline pays for these services via the airport fees. There is always an airport fee. We know that. And that is something that every airline has to pay. These are the services that airline and you know as, are paying as the airport fees. Airlines are paying to use this, of course, you know, for what? For the ground staff, for the air traffic control, and somewhat they would be the supplier. And we are the customer for them. Do not forget that. There are, you know, all our stakeholders are really helping us do what you what, what we can do. And of course, supplying the things that are really, you know, helping us, you know, sustain in business or develop our business are the ones who are nothing but what? But the suppliers for us and since they are the supplier for us let's say supplier for fuel let's say supplier for the ground staff let's say supplier for the services that we really have all of those would somewhere would relate to a supplier power that they would have on to us we should have that at the back of our mind now that may not be impacting per se but if that really comes your way you should be knowing that you know there are there are i'm just giving you some pointers my friend that you really need to have in your back of your mind so just to ensure that if, really, if there some really something really comes up your way, you're able to address it and write it there and then, of course, close it there and there. All right. Now, ATC from, you know, the air traffic control. Now, this is a regulatory or a governmental body. And that is one of the reasons, you know, it should be a very important, important stakeholder for you. ATC, very important body. Regulation can have fine impact the safety. These are the things that you should really have at the back of your mind that one of my important stakeholders is ATC. Remember, we're talking about the Menlo's, Menlo's framework, my friend. One of it is important stakeholder that you really have. Over here it is ATC. It should really have at the back of your mind. Namrita, see what all models I'm talking again and again. I'm just trying to remind you, my friend, that these are the things that you should be really, really having at the back of your mind when you're reading the pre material over here because he will give you something in the exam also to read, my friend. You should be really ready for the same. Is that clear, Namrita? Yes, sir. Coming on to aircraft ground handling. All of these are given in the pre-seen material, my friend. I have not taken it from anywhere else. All of it is here. I have just given you some bullets onto it and given you my purple points onto it in terms of you know what you should be really carrying on into the exam room so that you're not missing on to those important points. You have baggage management as a service. Customer service management as a service on the ground. You have aircraft boarding management as a service. You know, aircraft towing, refueling services also is there. Now, when I'm thinking about the fuel, I'm thinking about the airline industry. One thing that you should really have at the back of your mind is that oil will be a big thing over there. You have to have the, the uh, control over, you know, the price that you pay for the fuels. That is one of the one of the important ingredient of you know what you really bring on to the table. Very important for you to have a stabilized political economy, and that is there. But if anything really changes, then the crude oil can be a problem. Hence, my business can go for a toss. You should have at that at the back of your mind because if there is a risk, 
if there's a risk question that really comes your way in the exam, one of the risks can be the political stability. If in case examiner throws something like that onto yourself, because if political stability really goes for a toss, then the entire business goes for a toss because many of the cost would go beyond your control. Or if there is a, uh, you know, um, uh, somewhat the, you know, the, if there is something like COVID happening that can really, you know, shake down the entire business, especially in the airline business, because if we all know that, you know, the entire travel went for a toss when COVID thing really happened on in the world. All of those things should be there at the back of your mind when you're thinking about the risk, my friend. Risk is something that would certainly be there in the exam in some shape or form. I'm presuming that the only thing is you have to be ready for that. And of course, I'm giving you the brownie points that should be there at the back of your mind. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Crude oil is the politicized commodity. Key issue is price of the oil is increasing. Oh, sorry, price of oil increasing could have impact on the airline margins. We all know that. That's the basics, sir. We all understand that. Airport security, like the security check, you know, or the passport control that we have, you have to have a strong, strong check onto that any which ways. You may have to think about the automation, my friend, on the security piece. I read that, you know, that, you know, some of the parameters that they have given, we'll see that in a while. Some of them are falling. We should really think about it, that, you know, which all areas we need uh, to automate. And when we're thinking about, you know, adopting something or, or testing the environment, we all know that we have to do the pestle onto it. We have to do the pestle analysis. We are really, if we really have to assess the existing environment that we are in, existing situation that we are in, we have to do the pestle analysis and then take the next steps to move forward. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, some of the industry challenges, my friend, what he has really given us in the in the pre seen material is something like this. We have cyclical demand driven by the economic growth. Yes, sir. That is the that is the part and parcel of the business. We have terror attacks as one of the challenge of the air industry, airline industry. We all know that cyber attacks are again something that is being specifically said. Now, if you're thinking about cyber attack, cyber security should certainly come onto your mind because that is there in the syllabus area. And that is something that you may have to really have a hang off. All right. Cyber security should be strong. For the companies, there should be monitoring and, of course, auditing their system. You may get a case, my friend, in the exam wherein he's talking about the cybersecurity element. You should be prepared for, for that particular, particular thing. All right. Extreme weather condition is, again, something that I have spoken. You know, environmental and the weather events are something that you may get to see in the exam. You may need to have some strong system to really uh, predict the weather outcomes or the, you know, the weather forecast. You know, if that is not available, then that is again, you know, a case of concern. You have to invest on that. You as an airline industry can also invest on that. And of course, has to be dependent on the regulators any which ways. The climate change is again, that is being spoken. You know, CSR to offset the impact of, you know, carbon emergence. You know, every airline when they fly, you know, there is a carbon emergence that they really do. The, the kind of pollution that they really create. You have to create that or, or, or contain that to the minimum possible. That should be the ultimate aim that you should have. That is your social responsibility. Your integrated reporting should really talks on to that. That is something I should be really having at the back of my mind that, yes, that is again, can you know, that something can be the case. All right. Fuel prices, you know, volatile, prone to the foreign exchange movement. Again, we know that, you know, foreign exchange is concerned for us. That can be one of the things that we really have to have the, at the back of mind. Fuel and the FX risk and the major issues of the company can that can be one of the areas that you know examiner may throw something onto yourself you have to be very cautious on that environmental factors the carbon footprint as i said can be one of the areas number of the delayed flights are rising by 20 percent you have to have to you know take care of it come what may i do feel that you know something something or the other would certainly come up on this area which is the delayed flight as to what we can do you know, to control that, you may get a scenario wherein you may have to adopt a system in enhancing, you know, the, the flight um, timing and, of course, helping you avoiding these delays that are really happening. This may really come your way. If that really comes your way, you have to think about, you know, what is the current situation and what is the to-be situation. So maybe a pestle analysis coupled with, you know, what you would do in terms of new technological implementation is something that you really have to think through. New technological implementation may have some pros and cons. You have to think through that and so on and so forth. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Coming on to some industry KPIs. We, we have given the industry KPIs into it. Let's go and see through that. You know, you have the available seat kilometer. They call it to be ASK. You know, the 
available seat kilometer is something you know you have to have uh, as good utilization of your aircraft as possible to ensure that you have this um, as maximum as possible because low means that you have the empty seats so you always should plan it in a way that your occupancy uh, of an airplane is very high as much as possible revenue per available seat kilometer they call it ras key we should always have as high as possible you know it is a measure to you know of the potential revenue generation you have a load factor you know it is a measure of utilization my friend in terms of you know how much load we are really carrying you know on on the aircraft is something that that is again being noted and of course reported you have a revenue passenger kilometer which they call it rpk how many passenger kilometer are being you know are being traveled and of course you know when we correlate that with the revenue is something that we really have to think through and the co2 per passenger the carbon that you that that an airplane is really emerging from the from the flight standpoint is something that is being captured and being reported now important piece is that when we're thinking about these parameters we should think that you know where the industry is and where the we, where we are and you know, examine and throw something onto yourself saying that you know how can you improve on this or what is the strategy of an organization at large considering that what should you be doing with all of these kpis and so on and so forth including the ones that are that for which you are responsible to be regulators like what the co2 per passenger should be and the punctuality we have observed i'm sure you know some of you would have read this and understood this that in this it is specifically written that we are really going bad in terms of our functionality we are going worse on to that and we'll we'll see that in a while but we have to see in terms of you know what risk that really brings on to our business and what should one be doing in terms of you know ensuring that you know we have we are duly taking care or duly taking care of of all of those nuances that really lead to the risk situation wherein we may go out of the business so we have to think through that all right important for reputation customer satisfaction and key stakeholders like the atc and the airports punctuality is the key because if i'm on time if i'm on time it is always good to you know because it will keep all my stakeholders happy if i'm not on time then all of them would have some kind of some kind of complaints with me come what may all right there is an industry body that all that is also being given they call it to be grow global trade or you know association there is an industry or body also that is that is being that is being given over there which has nothing but the global trade association this global trade association is not spoken much in the entire uh, i would say uh, entire uh, pre seen material they have not spoken much on to that but i would really want you to take this as one of your important stakeholder because you are part of this trade association and somewhat any decision that you make would impact this trade association and they may come back on to yourself so it is imperative and important that you should have at, have this at the back of your mind if there is anything that really comes your way from the stakeholder standpoint then global trade association should be one of it especially when my friend he when he ask you to apply the analysis skill which effectively means that you should take information holistically from the case global trade association are the ones that should be referring from the stakeholder standpoint i'm just giving you one tip my friend god knows what he really have for you in the exam all right moving on to cause it you know we have understood what the industry really says and we have really read through you know what pointers we should have at the back of our mind as far as this industry is concerned now comes my friend what should you be thinking from the core z standpoint from the from the airline standpoint core z was established in corland 20 years ago all right when an when you know of course by the entrepreneur brothers eric and excel of course you know so both of brothers came together and they started of this they are the co-founders somewhat entrepreneurial ability and innovative ability has has to be has to be there with them eric and excel spotted a gap between the market and corland for more convenient and affordable low cost air travel they thought that you know you really needed to have a low cost air travel because they must be observing something more from the standpoint of huge cost that is the reason they got together and started something like this purpose of the company is what is to be low cost to ensure that they are they are able to give the benefit to the people at large i'm just thinking what is the overall strategy or a mission statement of an organization that is what really comes onto your mind when i'm reading something like this i'm just highlighting that i'm just ensuring that i'm fitting that onto my mind when i would be writing anything in relation to that i should have that that what is the mission statement of the organization that is there in the question is that clear yes sir now up to that point 
Corlands airline industry was dominated by full service carriers. That is the reason they disrupted the market. They effectively bought in a low cost airline and they started off with it. So effectively they were the market disruptor, innovative, had a strategic leadership. They were entrepreneurial. I'm just writing few things that are really topping up in my mind in terms of you know, what would they have done at that point in time. All right, now they have started the point-to-point -point service. We understand that. Corset has focused on operating flights to and from airports across Hundria with the highest customer demand and continually look for opportunity to extend its network. They have really worked on what market analysis. They've really seen what routes really work for them. They've seen their strength. They have, you know, then they have moved on to the new routes. They have always been hungry for the opportunities and that's what has led to their success. I can understand that. I'm just packing it, my friend, in my mind as to what they would have done. Is that clear? Is that clear, Namrita? Namrita, you're on mute, my friend. Yes, clear. Yes, ma'am. I'm just trying to ensure, ma'am, that I should get some break, no? If you'll speak for some time, I'll get some breather right for myself. That is the only reason. All right. Moving on to Cozet's overview. You know, I'm just extending the, you know, what we, what we were doing. Cozet's overview again says that, you know, cost efficiency has been its overriding strategic focus. We have understood this uh, right from the beginning that this is nothing but a story of cost leadership. Cost leadership strategy is being followed. Decisions are focused on offering service cheaply, need to see what competitors are doing since the loyalty is with the price and not with the company. Do not, do not forget that, Asma. Now, coming on to where we were, you know, we know that this is a cost leadership firm. We know that this is a firm which specifically deals with the, the cost leadership. And since they are dealing with the cost leadership, one of the most important component is that we should really have at the back of your mind is that people are very much driven by the price, by the cost. So they are not loyal to you. They are only loyal to the cost. So you should be having that at the back of your mind that if something like this happens, if something like this happens that your competitor offers you a better rate, offers somebody a better rate, then it is going to be a big time problem for us. We have to have that as one of the one of the uh, concern area for us, you know, as far as uh, somewhat somewhere, you know, uh, the business is concerned. So you should have that at the back of your mind that cost is going to be a real important thing. This has been delivered through developing and maintaining long-term strategic partnership with aircraft manufacturers, key airport, ground handling operators, and maintenance contracts who maintain cores at own aircraft. All are the key, hold, key stakeholders. When you're thinking about these stakeholders, think about it from the perspective that, you know, there are some ground staff that are, that are to be there as your stakeholders. And then there are some... Uh, uh, some, uh, I would say, the, the regulators who will be your stakeholders, the, the fund providers who will be your stakeholders, your owners will be your stakeholders, and so on and so forth. So you should have that holistic view from the stakeholder standpoint. Over the last 20 years, the low-cost model of air travel has continued to be very popular with the customers across Hundria, and, and there are now 30 low-cost airlines operating across the continent, which effectively tells you, Namrita, what? that there is a huge competition, my friend. There is a huge competition in the industry. They're highly competitive. Competition are threat to the new entrants is, is somewhat somewhere, I would say, medium to high. We should have that at the back of our mind and do not, do not really forget on that. 40% of the low cost airline market share is from three airlines that are not based in the same country. This is something that is being given in this, in this pie chart. If you'll go through your pre-seed material, it specifically says that, you know, while I have approximately 14% of the total market share, now, effectively, approximately 40%, approximately 40%, I'll just enlarge it as much as possible, 40% belongs to these three airlines, and these are like in, operating in different, different countries. So effectively, you should know that the top three airlines that has 40% of the business are not based in the same country. They're based out in different, different countries, which effectively means, Namrita, you know what? That I have an opportunity. I have an opportunity to get into different country too, as the case may be. Or, you know, uh, they may have an opportunity to enter into my country. So I have to be very cautious and very price sensitive as far as the 
overall overall delivery is concerned. Other 27 airlines, they have approximately 60% of your business. You know, opportunities, equation, threats, competitors might do it first. You have to have at the back of your mind that 27 airlines comprises and gives you 60% of revenue and only three of them gives you 40% of revenue. There has to be something with those three and you have to ensure that you're not missing on to it. All right. Moving on to the overview further in terms of, you know, what the corset overview is all about. Currently, we have 80% of the corset shares that are being held by large institutional investor. All right. Shareholders, key players must communicate with them and run decision by them. Important pieces, 80% are held by large institutional investors. So effectively, they are the one who will be driving us from the stakeholder management standpoint. You should have that at the back of your mind that we should be really communicating them, you know, well with them and ensuring that, you know, decisions are run past them and there is no gap on that. 10% of the share, you know, are held by cores and employees, which is, I think, very good from the, from the overall organizational standpoint because it is useful and ethical to give shares to the employees. It can help with staff retention and reduce the risk of staffing issues. And the remaining shares are held by small private investors i'm just going through the holding i'm just going through the facts that you know these are the areas that you should be having at the back of your mind when the shareholding is really spoken about because you should know who your stakeholders are and considering that you should know who your stakeholders are we should have a communication strategy inbuilt into our system to ensure that there is a regular check check-in that is happening and 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 you know there is nothing uh, that we are really missing on to that all right moving on guys you know we will talk on uh, We will talk on, on, the, on the investment. Corset has invested significantly in the latest aircraft, which is very good. So effectively, you should know that the company that we're really talking about is very much interested in investing rightly. And what they've done is that they've invested very heavily on the latest aircraft, which are more fuel efficient and environmentally friendly. Very important. We do not miss on that. This has contributed significantly to its low cost strategic position and has also positively impacted on reducing the carbon emergence. Coming on to the coming on to you know the, the investment that is you know the Corset has been making, we can completely correlate to the fact or understand this fact that Corset is 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 really investing very heavily on the aircraft. They they have you know all of their aircraft are less than 4.5 year old, which is very low as compared to the industry average. Now when I'm thinking about this, when I'm saying this, the thing that should really come onto your mind is that if the aircrafts are significantly younger than the industry standard, then Corset is somewhat somewhere less, less impacted by the fuel increase because my aircraft would have less fuel. So somewhat somewhere, if, uh, you know, if asthma, this point really comes your way, that fuel is a concern that is really coming onto yourself. And you're mentioning something like this, that our aircrafts, are really new. Hence, we are just not 100% impacted by the increase in fuel price. Examiner would be happy to understand that you have noticed that fact that your, your uh, fleet is a new fleet. It is not an old one and so on and so forth. And hence, that you know, on the other side, the depreciation onto your PNL would be high considering you have new fleet onto yourself. Think about these things, Arna. Very important. Very important to have it. Uh, you know, at the back of your mind, you know, when you're really stepping in into, into any organization or when you're stepping into the, the exam room so that you're not able to or you're not being uh, uh, missing on these important points. It's okay, couple. That's fine. You know, I just wanted to see all of you once. It's absolutely fine. All right. Corset focuses on the leisure passenger rather than on the business passenger. Therefore, its aircraft cabins consist of economy class seats only with the high density layout. You have a potential over here, Namrita. You know what potential is? I'm only doing the leisure passenger. There is an opportunity to do business class. In the business class, realization is very high. Remember, Delhi to US economy class is 50, 60,000 rupees. But business class is 2 lakh of rupees, 2 lakh 50,000 rupees. Huge in terms of revenue that I really have it from there. So there is an opportunity here that I may start my business class down the line that would be high revenue business for me namrita always have that at the back of your mind i'm giving you some brownie points my friend do not forget on that all right moving on some of the key resources that we have spoken 
we have routes my friend that are very profitable and we have extensive extensive portfolio of routes being available to us which is a big plus my friend you should really have it at the back of your mind that you are very much in in advantageous position because you have the right routes in the airline industry what is really needed is that you have the right routes at the right time because if you have right route and you have right timing being available you will have the maximum customer traveling with you that is what this organization really has which is a big plus modern fleet 300 aircraft of which 75% are owned outright and remaining 25% are leased now i have huge investment done in the aircraft i may have huge uh, you know cap capex as well as opex being there and 25% of, you know is is you know of that is being leased latest aircraft which are more fuel efficient and envir environmental friendly corset average aircraft is 4.5 year old which is low as compared to industry standard aircraft cabin consists of economy class seats only of course with high density layout you may get a serious situation my friend wherein he may want you to travel to another country get into another country get into another continent or expand into the business class and so on and so forth all these things should be there at the back of your mind when you're thinking about this technologically think about how can they run further automation using the ai ai is the need this may be throwing something out at yourself cyber security is important we know that this is one of the concern risk cyber security risk downtime server issues all of those things should be there at the back of your mind opportunities you should have more automation artificial intelligence and so on and so forth all of those things should be there at the back of your mind when you're thinking something like that from the people standpoint there are few things that i really <coughs> want you to have it think about issues like staff strikes treating staff you know well is very important the risk is that you know you have strike retention you know reputation you may have staffing issues and to avoid that you should think about you know career development you know treating them fairly and so on and so forth very small but pivotal things but we all know that i just when i'm reading this from the people standpoint from the technology standpoint i'm just highlighting those areas onto my mind that these are the areas these are the things that i should be thinking about all right from the board structure standpoint from the board structure standpoint think <coughs> I'm sorry. Think about the corporate governance. You remember we saw that 80% is lying with the you know high individual you know high uh, um, I would say the large institutional investors. I have to think about you know what is the structure that I really needed to have from the governance standpoint. There is a chart that is being given over here that really talks about the non-executive directors and the directors and so on and so forth. We have to run through that and of course understand that we have to have the right mix of NEDs, the right skills. you know there should not be an agency problem and of course you know we should have agms we should have committees and so on and so forth that is again something that can that can that can be thrown at yourself you know if if that really comes your way there are four sub committees you know you have audit committee nomination committee remuneration committee and safety committee that is given in the question that is something that this organization already has audit committee is for control processes we should know a nomination committee is of course to ensure that we have right people who are being selected a remuneration committee is to ensure that they are being paid fairly and safety committee is more to ensure that you have the right risk management procedures and of course it's an airline industry so you really have to have this you know safety committee to ensure that you know safeguarding is surely taken care now some of the risk management areas that are being given in the in the pre seen material if i if i really open that it is on it is on page 9 the risk management and the key risk that that organization is really exposed to you know we have already spoken on that but you should be thinking about the risk management techniques you know for example the corsets you know key risk includes and it is being given one is safety and security of the customer and staff delivering safe and secure operation which meets the need of expectation of customers and staff is critical for the business so if you're thinking about the risk of this organization this is one to be picked up the growing impact of climate change and increasing expectation from the customers government regulators wider society for greater focus on the government and sustainability activities macroeconomic and geopolitical events such as general economic trend foreign exchange rates and volatile fuel prices which all will impact the financial performance the availability security and performance of its website and its critical operating system remember my friend while these four things are being spoken about here i think there can be a question on any of the area that is being mentioned here
There can be a you know, question on safety and security. There can be a question on the climate change. There can be a question on the general economic trends, the foreign exchange rate, the volatile fuel prices. There can be a question on you having completely ramping up your website or investing very heavily in the automation. There can be one area that can really come onto yourself in the exam basis, what I really see as the risk over here. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, if you really you know, go through that, there are some extracts being given towards the end in terms of you know, what we do. And I've just highlighted a few of the areas you know, that really should be coming onto at the top of your mind in terms of you know, what those things are. You know, when I see you know, what we do, you know, we should be understanding about that purpose, our strategy, values, which is nothing but the affordability and the sustainability. We believe in that. And that is something which you should carry as a mission statement in the exam. Mission statement is connect the people of Andrea through affordable and sustainable air travel. You should certainly write this mission statement, my friend, come what may in some shape or format in the exam, gonna be very critical for you if you're able to demonstrate this. Then what has happened is that they have given you a, a value chart, which really talks on their values. What I've done is I've really categorized that into five important pieces. You know, on the first side, what they've given is that you should have sustainable behavior, where it's managing emergence, you know, investing in efficient aircraft, minimizing the waste. I think that they're very ethical. So I've really given this to be an ethics as something that is really existing in this kind of a corporation. Then what they really talk on is the commitment to the safety, wherein staff and health safety, customer security, emergency preparedness is something that is there on the cards. I have named that to be health safety, you know, um, and security as a concern, as a value that is certainly there. Then they're talking about, you know, the employees, the people, you know, are always first. So they're engaging, engaging with the employee, offering the fair reward and development opportunities. I think one of the, one of the key element of, of their strategy is having people first to ensure that they have a better retention for them. Now, coming on to the cust you know, customer trust, they have customer satisfaction, data protection, the prevention, preventing the bribery and corruption. So effectively, you know, what we're really talking on over here is that customers are their biggest, biggest stakeholders. And since they're really talking on the, you know, the, uh, the data, data protection, I would consider that, you know, cybersecurity is something that somewhat may, you may see in the exam coming your way. So be better be prepared for that. All right, coming on to the, you know, the last one, which is diverse, uh, you know, driving, driving innovation. We have to think about, you know, investing in the latest technologies, innovation to improve customer experience and affordability and so on and so forth. So when we are thinking about innovation, we may think of different model. And one of the model that really comes my way that I think about is, is having a pestle analysis being done in terms of your current scenarios or current situation in terms of understanding the current pluses and minuses. And of course, capitalizing on them basis different model to ensure that you're able to address that in the best possible way. Now, a few of the you know, graphs that are being given over here, you know, I've just generalized them in terms of you know, what that is. What I feel is that you know, my profits have really increased at a greater, data, you know, greater rate than revenue. That is what is being, meaning being shown over here. Punctuality is declined and this could be, a, you know, could be worrying my friend. I have seen punctuality declining over here in these graphs which is a worrying thing for me because this effectively doesn't go very well with, with, the, with the mission statement or the value that I have in the organization. We have to work through this. It is not gonna be staying like this. And then customer satisfaction you know, is largely increased, which is a big thing for me. But a risk that I see is that the way my punctuality is falling, <laughs> considering my punctuality, we know that it is falling. We may get to see a situ situation wherein my customer satisfaction may go for a toss as we go forward. So it is important that we are not missing on to that. One of the important pieces that you would see over here is the cost breakdown, my friend, that they have given. If you really see this, one thing that really comes very glaring to me is that they have the airport ground staff as 27%, 27% of their total cost, which I think is huge. So you may watch for something on this when you will get the bifurcation on this in the exam. They, you, and if there is anything that is really impacting the airport ground handling team per se or, or the process per se, you should know that it is a huge cost for you. And considering that, you have to be very sure that you know what decision you are making on this ground is right for yourself and you are not missing on to that. The next high cost is the fuel cost, you know, which is 22%. So any change in these costs should certainly be troubling you 
from the decision making or the strategy standpoint again you should have that at the back of your mind that you're not missing on to it considering this my friend what i did was i tried preparing the swot analysis for yourself in terms of you know when i see this organization what strengths that i see and what weaknesses and what are the opportunities and what are the threats that i see for this organization i just prepared that for you just to make sure that you know you have that at the back of your mind so that if there is any question wherein you have to demonstrate strength you know that if there are some risk areas you know the threats if there are some opportunities that you may have to capitalize on you know the opportunities and of course threat is something that you know really goes with the risk that that you may get exposed to so you may need to refer this on the strength side we have a reputation as a big one quality as a big one size as a big one and current market position as a big one these are my strength my friend in terms of you know what i really have in addition to that i may have you know the the 75% of the fleet also being owned by me so there is a huge capital um, i would say that is available with me which is not going to be easy for anyone on the weakness end point you know i have punctuality that is really going for a toss customer loyalty is to price do not forget that fuel price you know is a uh, reliance is is a big concern anything goes going wrong on the on the political side can really you know you know somewhat um, um, somewhat create a problem for me and return on capital employed is more or less stagnant that's not good for me you know that should be that should be having an increasing mode the graph really says that i've just penned down my friend what i have understood from here so on the opportunity side i see huge opportunity on the technological development acquisition or a joint venture can again something that may come your way in the exam who knows that international market you know exposure or venturing out is certainly on the cards multi regional can also be one of the area and business class can again be one of the area i think somewhat somewhere my friend he would somewhat somewhere give you some of you know some of the question or some question talking about these opportunities be ready for it be ready for it something something may come in this area you should plan your mind on this you know in this direction if this really comes your way going on to the threats my friend you know you may have some legal and political changes coming or you know coming your way you know that can be a big time threat for yourself cyber security staffing issue economic risk if there is some recession really happens or any kind of reputational risk if there is you know there is something wrong that happens in a, in, a, in an aircraft there can be a huge reputational risk too this is something my friend i think this is the crux of you know what we have really spoken about you know on the holistic basis of this pre seen material this really gives us the insight as to what that is all going to be all about is that clear yes sir now these are the areas you know my friend we have spoken on that you know i think you know we can we can have a you know acquisition thing we can have cyber security thing financial analysis competitors new service new area new geography environmental issues carbon monoxide supplier and staffing issues you know in terms of you know what is really going on the ground new market and route issues health and safety concerns all of those areas are the throughput of what we have spoken in terms of the areas that should be really having at the back of your mind that you may have to answer if you really sit for you know of course sit and of course start answering this this effectively ends my friend what i really wanted to cover we have really covered it very hard in terms of you know what we really needed from the pc material we have covered everything that materially says i have not left even a single line my friend in terms of reading it and of course making sure that we are really able to comprehend and get what we really need from that to ensure that we have the hold of it right from the scratch we're not missing out on anything if this is with you i'm sure you know you'll be able to get that perspective and get that understanding in the more holistic way any questions guys anyone anyone have <clears throat> before we really wrap up a couple says how will we get this notes kapil we will be forwarding this notes to all our students so they will get it anything guys anyone namrita asma anything nizam sir i have a question if you may allow me yes please uh sir what i wanted to uh, i mean what came up again and again when i was reading the pre scene was the fuel price now i remember you telling us about um hedging hedging the risk of uh, of something that is volatile through forward contracts uh would that apply here C could we potentially say why not, say why not? Okay. absolutely 
Absolutely. You may enter into forward contract for, for the fuel. It, it happens. Very, very common. I see. Okay. Is ROC stagnant because uh, in, uh, expenses are increasing? Pool details were not given over here. So, you know, I was not able to make out the reason for it. But that can be one. Or that can be that, you know, my revenue per FT is not increasing. Okay, sir. But full details are not given, so very difficult to comment like that. But yes, what I could make out is something I have written over here. Sir, the profit is increasing, but the, the revenue is, uh, is not increasing at that constant rate. Does that imply that the cost of sale is just going down like hugely? Uh, it's not that it is not increasing. The rate is low. The revenue rate is low, but profit rate is high, which effectively means that you, you're controlling your cost in a greater way nice. or the, the incremental that your revenue that you're having is not having that incremental cost. So both ways it is good. Nizam, anything? Rahul, Varsha. Varsha, all good? Uh, yes, sir, yeah. There is a lot of effort that has gone into this, my friend, trust me, uh, in terms of, you know, really getting into and dwelling it into the details. We will be forwarding you this. Please ensure that you are able to take a good, uh, you know, view of it, understand that, and of course, you know, ensure that you incorporate in your answer. Rahul, can I expect that, my friend? Yes, sir. I have to, my friend, because I have to, you know, accrue my cup of coffee onto my my financial statements, right? All right. Good, guys. Thank you very much. We will be circulating this by tonight or by tomorrow morning positively. You should have it. And this video also will be circulated to you. Uh, and you can, of course, have a look on that in terms of, you know, what all things that you need to revise and, of course, go through it again. Thank you very much, guys. I wish you all the luck. And I really, really want you to succeed to ensure my cup of coffee come what may. The one other important thing that you really have to have at the back of your mind is, that when you're really getting out of the exam room, the first thing first that you really need to do is you have to drop me a note on WhatsApp in terms of how the exam was. Giving me some detail about the exam, about the questions is very helpful for me to really understand as to you know where we are going. And of course, it helps me keeping abreast with the changes that are really happening on the exam side of it so that I can really help you know a new Nizam and a new Rahul uh, down the line after, the, after a month or so to really do well in their exam. So guys, it, I'll be very obliged if you can share that with me. Just WhatsApp me in terms of, you know, what did you really saw in your exam? It'll help me, you know, uh, helping people around and helping people in their growth. Can I expect that, Nizam, Rahul? Yes. Nia, can I expect that, sure, buddy? Sure. All right, good. Thank you very yes. much, guys. Look forward, all the best. And, uh, you know, if, if you're seeing me for the first time, guys, for the people who are seeing me on YouTube, do go and subscribe to our channel, Fintram Global, because we, if you are thinking about acing the ASBL exam, this is the point to start off with. Fintram Global, think ACCA, think Fintram.